You know, because today we're going to be talking about peace. Everybody say peace. And it's the only the kind of peace that we can find only by being connected with Jesus Christ. Above, above all else, amen, being connected with Jesus Christ, there is a peace that he gives us, you know, G-I-F-T-S. And we're going to get into that word. But before I, uh, you know, I was reflecting, before we get into that, you know, I brought my, my plant here. And uh, for us in America, it is known as the jasmine plant, yes? Fortunately for all of us here in Hawaii, it is known as the pikake, right? Pikake, I love it. And it smells like luau, right? You smell them, right? They make lays out of this. I love it. I had one, and it fell, and then I picked it up. I smelt it. I was like, oh, gosh. Smells of my youth, right? But all the Pinoy is in the house. Come on. All the Pinoy is in the house. I see them over here, right? Right? It's, in the, it's the national flower of Filipinas. Sampaguita. Yes, absolutely. And so, like, for me, it's a very special flower because I'm proud Pinoy. But also, you know, growing up in Hawaii. So it's a very meaningful plant to me. So one day, you know, Teresa and I, we were walking around in the garden shops and all this kind of stuff. And I pick one up because, like, oh, I want a Sampaguita. I want, I want to plant it on the east side of my house. I was talking with Auntie Pam over there. And she was all like, yeah, you should buy one because when the, in the morning, yeah, when the east wind breeze blows, it blows into your house, and you, you get that smell, right? That oh, beautiful smell, right? So anyway, so I did, but I had it in a pot, and for a year and a half, I got to admit, I'm not exactly proud to share this, I neglected it for about a year and a half. Oh, I know, yeah. So anyway, it's, it was shriveling up. We had a hot summer these past couple of years, right? And so it started shriveling up, and it all dried up. And I did not know if it was alive. I thought it was dead, quite honestly. And so I just, I just cut it all off and all that. But I know that you got to leave some of the leaves because the leaves are needed for the sun and photosynthesis and all this kind of stuff. So anyway, I, I prune it, and then I start watering it again. I water it consistently. Maybe one day I'll just water it. A couple of days later, I'll water it again. Not too much because I don't want to drown the roots, right? And then, lo and behold, maybe a couple of weeks later, I see these little shoots coming out. And I celebrate. I'm like, yes, I didn't kill it, right? I'm not a failure. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, so how many of you guys know that that is only possible if the roots are strong? Yeah? And so one of the questions that I began asking myself, and I pose this to all of you as well, my beloved brothers and sisters, how strong are your spiritual roots, right? How strong are your roots? That sometimes when we go on in life, when we feel thirsty and we start to shrivel up, right? And then the world comes and there's wind and then, there, you know, we just had like a strong winds and all that kind of stuff. And then... The sun comes and we get scorched, right? And we don't know if we're going to survive. We don't know what the state of our spiritual roots are. You know, and oftentimes I share, and, um, you know, this, this passage of Scripture is so dear to my heart. I memorized it in Hebrew. It's, Sh'tolim beveit Adonai b'chatsrot Eloheinu yafrichu, which means, Planted in the house of the Lord, we shall flourish in the courts of our God. And that is something that I've always held within my heart. It's always resonated in my heart. And whenever I get a chance to share that, you know, and hopefully that resonates with people, that makes sense with people. As we come into the house of God and we root ourselves into his fertile soil. Amen. That's what we're talking about. Abide. This is the fourth week of our abide series and by a show of hands how many of you guys are being blessed i know sister moana is amen right we're all being blessed by this series because we emphasize the point that we all need to be connected to jesus christ who is the vine pastor mark right he laid out the foundation the very first week jesus christ is the vine we are his branches right and then the second week of the series, Joseph and Leslie Lee, whenever they come, they're ministers 
phenomenal ministers from New Zealand, right? Whenever they come, it's always Holy Spirit fun, right? And then last week, right, phenomenal message, Pastor Earl, right? Proud Japanese, but, you know, he's Filipino at heart, so, you know, Sampagita, right? Yeah, he grew up in Waipahu, right? But, no, that was a phenomenal message. And what I got from Pastor Earl's message was, Jesus, no joke, he like yoke. Yeah? And so, as we continue on with Abide, we're going to be focusing on the peace that comes with it. So, the promise of peace. Heavenly Father, have this remote. Yeah, okay, thank you. Right? Pray that the remote works, and it does. Amen. So, the promise of peace. And so, before we jump into that, like going back to my Sampagita, my Pikake, sweet Pikake Lei. You guys know that song, right? I love that song. Um, but, you know, I was reflecting. You know, I was, I was walking in my backyard, and we have, like, flowers. You know, we're kind of redoing our, our flower garden in the back because we love splashes of color. So that's why I wanted to revive this baby, you know, beautiful. And so I began thinking about Teresa and my um, ministerial lineage, if you will. Because I believe that it has to be an honoring you know, and it all comes, it all stems, pun intended, right? It all stems from uh, a heart of gratitude. It all stems from a heart of gratitude. And so I was looking at this, and I'm just thinking like, you know, Teresa and I have been at this thing as praise and worship leaders f- since 2001. And you guys know our story. You know, we came to this church back in Wahiwa Middle School, all bus up. You know, it's kind of like everybody else. <laughs> Bus up in our own way. And so we come, and our point of connection to the church, New Hope Central Oahu, our point of connection was through the worship team. And that's, this is our story. You know, because we're a musical and all this kind of stuff, Pastor Mike recognized that we, it's a passion of ours. So he invited us out to the worship team. Long story short, Pastor Mike did one of those, hey, Teresa, I got to go out and answer this phone call. I'll be right back, right? And he never did. Yeah. (laughs) It's like one of those things, like, I'm going to go out for a a gallon of milk. I'll be right back, right? And he never came back. (laughs) And so we laugh and we giggle about that. But I think that was the only way for us to kind of embrace. Pastor Teresa says that was the only way for us to embrace. Otherwise, we wouldn't have never got connected in that way. You know, looking back in hindsight, right? And so here we are, little old Glenn and Teresa Rosario, and we're looking at Pastor Michael Palompo. Did you guys know that Pastor Mike Palompo is a phenomenal worship leader? Did you guys know that he is a phenomenal musician? Some people play the piano, but Pastor Mike tinkles the ivories. You know what I mean? You know, like, I think about Schroeder from Charlie Brown, from Peanuts. Pastor Mike can do that. <laughs> and he's probably thinking, nah, but no, but he is extremely talented. He plays guitar. He has a wonderful singing voice. He can do the, uh, the brass. He understands everything that goes on the stage. So when we speed up, slow down the tempo, he goes, hey, Glenn, let me talk to you. We got to have a chat here. You know, you guys got to work on that harmonies, maybe work on that modulation a little bit more smoother. You know, so he understands all that. It's like, yes, sir, yes, sir. Right? So that's Pastor Mike. Above him, kind of down the line, is Pastor Wayne Cordero because Pastor Mike planted out of Pastor Wayne Cordero's church. Did you guys know, and I'm sure you guys know, that Pastor Wayne Cordero is a phenomenal worship leader. Beautiful singing voice. Talented guitar player. He's like one of the best guitar players I've ever seen. He's a jazz guy. And then he plays uh, banjo. Yeah, among other things. And then above that, I like to think, and some of you guys may be familiar with this name, but it's Pastor Jack Hayford. Okay, he has a, he has a church out in Southern California, Church on the Way. He's since passed away. But Pastor Jack Hayford, is a, is a, he's a pastor to pastors. He's an author, phenomenal ministry. He's also a psalmist. He's a songwriter. He's, he, he writes songs unto the Lord. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite 
worship teams come from New Zealand, the parachute band, and uh, they wrote a song called All the Earth. And according to scholars worldwide, they would say that All the Earth is probably the most theologically sound worship song that anybody has ever written thus far, right? And of course, Jack Hayford had his hand in that. So, you know, why am I explaining this? Because Teresa and I, we see this golden thread that is being spun throughout the lives, being connected to Jesus Christ. Amen. There is a golden thread that connects us all together. And it's not, okay, so take Glenn and Teresa out of it. What about your life? Think about who came before you. Think about who connected you to Jesus Christ. You know, Pastor Earl over there, he's like a broken record. And I love that about him. Amen. He is so passionate about seeing people connect Amen. to Jesus Christ. And we do it through our, our church. We do it through Ohana groups. We do it through ministries. Just get connected. That's kind of like his thing, right? And we love him for it. Yes. yes. Absolutely, because he understands the power, the transformative power that occurs within someone's spirit from the Holy Spirit as, as the Holy Spirit indwells inside of us that can only occur as we connect to the vine. Hallelujah. And so I'm looking at this, and like I said, there's a golden thread that weaves us all together. But it's not connecting to another person. It's connecting to Jesus Christ himself by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we all come together, and we form a real nice, vibrant, flourishing Sampagita. Amen. Pikake for some of you. But you guys understand what I'm saying. So as we look at the promise of peace, brothers and sisters, John 14, it says, don't let your hearts be troubled. In other words, we find safety in company, especially with like-minded people. We, we, we find safety in peace with people that share the same values. Amen. So don't let your hearts be troubled, Jesus is saying. Trust in God and trust also in me. And that's another key for us to understand. If we are seeking the peace that is seemingly available to us, right? Because we got to want it. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But Jesus shows us this in chapter 14. He says, be at peace. Don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. And then he says, there is more than enough room. And I circled that enough room because in another translation, it says there are many mansions. Everybody say mansions. Now, the last I checked, there are many mansions. Mansions refer to people of royalty, right? And people coming from Europe. You guys see a lot of castles and mansions and big, right? And, you know, I think about, I think about the, the, the lives in Europe and how there's such rich history in Europe. And America is barely 200-some years old, right? But I think about all the history that went on on that side of the world, right? So we think about, we think about mansions. Mansions refer to royalty, in the Greek, it says monai, which means abode, right? So we look at the word abode, which means a permanent dwelling place. And then we connect that word to the word abide, right? So it's like abode is the noun, abide is the verb. So to dwell it's a permanent dwelling place. So, we, uh, so Jesus is showing us that in the future... That what we have to look forward to, brothers and sisters, is that we will abide in God's abode. You guys see that, right? So how is, why is he talking about this when he's talking in terms of peace? Because he's elevating our thinking. He's elevating our thoughts. He's giving us a grander, a broader a, a perspective that transcends all the problems and the troubles of this world. He's not dismissing it. 
In fact, he's acknowledging that there will be trials, that there will be tribulation. He is acknowledging that. He's affirming that. But at the same time, he says, raise your perspective. Elevate your perspective. Let's go beyond all the troubles of this world. And I will show you a place, if you choose to, that we will go together. And I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but that gives me peace. Understanding that planet Earth is not what is all there to life. That we do have something to look forward to. Yeah? So in my father's home. And this, if this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be, we, be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. Now, I got to believe that these disciples, these apostles, they were all good Jewish boys that understood the Torah. They understood the Pentateuch. They understood what the, the, old, the, the, the past uh, prophets said. They were very familiar with what Isaiah said. They were very familiar with what Jeremiah said, what Zechariah said. You guys understand what I'm saying? So they're looking at Jesus and all the miracles that he's performing, everything he's saying, everything that he's doing, and they're saying, wait a minute, he's fulfilling prophecy before our very eyes. And so Jesus says, you know the way, you know what I'm talking about, you know who I am and what I'm all about. That's what Jesus is saying. But then there's Doubting Thomas, right? Now how many of you guys relate to this guy as we bring it, bring it into the 21st century? How many of you guys relate to Doubting Thomas and saying, okay, yeah, show me proof. I don't know, understand what you're talking about, Jesus. What is he talking about, right? I would be right next to him. We have no idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? And then Jesus says the famous line, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come. Again, the destination seems to be to the Father. Right? Giving us a heavenly perspective. So everybody say, to the Father. Okay? Sometimes, people just kind of stay fixed and focused on this world. They focused on the tree. They fail to see the entire forest. Right? So Jesus is saying, elevate your perspective. And we can easily look into the news and see what's going on, right? I saw this the thing on the news and how this man got 60 years in prison for committing a uh, crime. Wow. You know, and we look into what's going on in the Middle East. We look at all the confusion that's happening throughout all the college campuses. And we pray for our, you know, our, our kids that are attending these, these colleges, you know. All this stuff. But we look to Jesus and we have a future and a hope in him. So what we learned so far, to trust in Jesus and not the world. Amen. Like I said, Jesus affirms our troubles, but he adjusts our focus. Yeah. And some people don't know to think of the heavenly perspective that is available to us. Jesus is not merely a guide. He is the way. And I want to unpack that a little bit. So it's, it's not like Jesus is saying, yeah, it's this way. It's this way. He's saying, follow me. He's saying, connect to me. I am the vine. You are the branches. And in me, you will bear good fruit, tremendous fruit. And what is the fruit? Well, we can look in Galatians, peace, love, happiness, joy, long-suffering. And oftentimes I tell people that if we're going to engage in the Christian life and choose to, determine to, to make the decision to follow Christ and journey with him for the rest of our lives, we must think long-term. Yeah? And then we see how the Spirit transforms us from glory to glory. Jesus says, I am leaving you with a gift, and that gift is peace of mind and heart. Everybody say peace of mind and heart. Now, three things I know about gifts. Three things I know about gifts, right? So just pretend this is a gift. 
And I'm saying, you know what, cat? Here is a gift. I want to give this to you. And uh, I want to bless you with this, cat. Three things I know. Cat needs to receive it. Yes. That's number one. She needs to receive it. Number two, she needs to open it. And then number three, she needs to determine its value. Is it going to be valuable for her? So the question is, would peace of mind and heart be valuable to you, brothers and sisters? Because Jesus clearly says, I'm gifting this to you guys. So are we going to receive it? And then are we going to open it? And are we going to determine its value? But can I just say that anything that comes from heaven, anything that comes from Jesus Christ himself is of worth? A worth that we don't necessarily understand that transcends the value of any value here on earth if it comes from heaven. Hallelujah. Right? So receiving it, opening it, and determining its value. Otherwise, cat could just like, oh, yeah, thanks, whatever, and just put it on the shelf and let it collect dust. Right? And then forget about it. Right? And then it says, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you, Jesus says. In other words, don't forget this. I am going away, but I will come back to you again. If you really loved me, you would be happy that I am going to the Father who is greater than I am. Okay? But in fact... It is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate, the comforter, the encourager, or counselor won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And this advocate, this comforter, is also known as, shout it out, everybody, the Holy Spirit. Now, I will say this. The Holy Spirit is not an it. Notice that it says... Because if I don't, the advocate comforter, I won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. But in fact, it is best for you that I get away. Oh, this is not the translation. But anyway, in another translation, he refers to the Holy Spirit as he. Can I get an amen? So we know that the Holy Spirit is a person. And we need to understand that the Holy Spirit is not some force that we can wield it's not an it, because if we think that the Holy Spirit is an it, then we tend to use it. We tend to use things. But if we think in terms of the Holy Spirit being a he, a person, then we come alongside that person, and we get to fellowship with that person. We, we can't even talk with that person, right? And so having a person in our life other than yourself so you don't feel alone all the time ought to give us comfort ought to give us peace right does that make sense and so when we come into the knowledge of Christ and become into the we come into the family of God and we receive the holy spirit brothers and sisters the truth is we are never alone amen Sometimes people, they would say to us as pastors, they would say, I feel all alone, like nobody understands me. And I get that. We're very compassionate towards that. And what that tells us is that they don't have an understanding of who the Holy Spirit is. Amen. But we can talk about that some other time. Oop, sorry, go back. Oops, sorry, go back. What we learned so far. Jesus overcoming the world provides a foundation for faith and resilience in the face of difficulties. True peace found in Christ allows believers to find strength and hope by trusting in his victory. Yeah. Oops, go back. I think this thing advanced like four slides real quickly it's okay you know i'll make sense of it all right there we go what we learned so far so jesus overcoming the world no i just read that yeah i just read this part okay let me let me go back here sorry guys okay remember where i was 
Thank you, Moana. Everybody, round of applause for Moana in the back of the Gosh darn it, right? So the divine peace of Christ is enduring and rooted in the spiritual connection with the Holy Spirit, right? And through this connection, the transformative peace of Christ becomes a living reality. And that's what I wanted to get at. Everybody say living reality. So what does that look like? Okay. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun this morning because I asked a certain couple to come up. And of course, Pastor Teresa and myself, we have a we have a wonderful privilege of walking with them. So I'm going to call up Devin Miguel and Kylie Gamboa. <laughs> Round of applause, everybody! Yeah, and you know, I've known I've known Devin for quite some time. Um, he went to school with Braden, and, and I know that Kylie has been at this church uh, for years now. And so they've been praying. They kind of went through their, their, uh, their journey. And, um, you know, long story short, we had a conversation about them. And can I say that you folks are looking at getting married? Right? They're engaged. Right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. And so we had a conversation. And so long story short, Pastor Teresa and myself are going to prepare them for marriage. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you guys that when we tie the knot, we tie them tight. Okay, so anyway, we're excited about that because we know that the Holy Spirit is doing wonderful things in your lives individually as well as lives together as we look forward to the future together. But I asked them, brothers and sisters, I said, are you guys experiencing peace right now by being connected to the vine and in what areas of your life? Right, so kind of had they had a week to think about it, and no nervous because it's going to be powerful, you guys. Anyway, so I'm I'm excited to hear from you guys. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, so if you don't already know, we've been together for eight and a half years. It's been quite the journey, um, quite a rocky journey actually. Um, I've never known Christ um, until. Fairly recently, like the past, uh, maybe like five, six months ago. Um, but yeah, um, through, you know, our time together, um, before coming to Christ, which was really our breaking point, um, we were going through a very tough situation. Um, we weren't 100% on how to love each other. And so we both decided to go through 40 days of no contact, no communication, nothing with each other. We wanted to see if we could do it. We wanted to see if, you know, we would both pursue Christ and if Christ would bring us back together. And so we went on this journey. Um, and I started to come to church uh, on my own. Um, actually, I started coming with Kahiva. Um, Kahiva, raise your hand. Where are you? There you are. That's my friend, Kahiva. Everybody, thank you. I started to come to church with him, and um, we started to Bible study together, um, actually after work or after our workout sessions, because we kind of work in the same place. But um, yeah, he was like kind of like my guide through the Bible. And then um, another amazing connection I made was um, with Pastor Earl. He was one of the first pastors I connected with here. and. Um, <laughs> Funnily enough, right, the Connection Pastor is the first pastor I connected with. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he helped uh, us go through another Bible study class. Um, so we were Bible studying on our own, and we were going through a Bible study class. And then he also connected us with Pastor Mark and Jaylee, because we had a background, we both had a background in helping with kids. And um, we, he's pointed us in the direction of helping out with the Zale Youth Group. And that's been such a blessing to the both of us. It's been amazing. Um, what other connections have I made? Uh, oh, I've made some. Uh, Mike and Sky. Um, Mike Garcia and Sky De La Cruz, they are amazing. They started the fellowship group, and we started to go out to this fellowship group. And, you know, we learned a lot. And we've also been able to teach a lot as well to each other. And that's been a huge blessing. And um, all that to say that 
um, in that time of the 40 days, those are just a few of the connections that I've made to really help um, find peace in the moment. And um, I just want to praise God, too, because um, not only did he show me that, he, you know, I found peace in those moments, is that I also made connections outside of that as well. Like, I started, I re we recently just started a, a, a men's group with uh, Braden Rosario, um, Grant. Grant is also in that group. Luke is in that group. Um, Zach is also in that group. But, um, yeah, we recently just started that, and um, it's amazing. Uh, God has been working in our lives, and he's not only provided me with, you know, peace in the moment of the 40 days, which was probably the hardest time of my life. Um, he's also provided an eternal peace Amen. with the connections that I've made and these connections I will never, ever let go of. Um, I'm Kylie, if you don't know me. Uh, so like Devin said, uh, we went through 40 days no contact, and eight years of being together, that's not easy at all. And, um, but through that time, I know that I needed healing, and I just knew I needed God. And my dad directed me back to church. So I started coming again, because prior to that, I had walked away. Um, I stopped coming to church. I stop praying, I stopped going to God and asking him for help, and I thought I could do life on my own, and I could not. And um, yeah, so through those 40 days, I did the inner healing and deliverance class, which is really awesome, by the way, guys. <laughs> um, and then I also got connected with the Resolutions for Women's uh, Ministry, and so I was surrounded by like a bunch of really awesome girls. Um, but I don't know, I think I was still struggling like with my inner peace, I guess, with what was happening with us. And I didn't know what to do. And um, one day I was sitting in my truck. I was getting ready to go to work and I broke down. Uh, this is about like maybe like halfway through the 40 days and I thought I was doing good, and all of a sudden I just broke down, and the only way to describe it was I felt like I was shattering. And um, in that moment, um, I was just like asking God, like, why, why is this happening to me? I don't understand. Um, and he showed me a vision, and I've never gotten a vision before, so I don't know what that's like, but he showed me a vision, and um, it was, it was him, and I guess he was just kind of like, like this, over me, and there's like this little me, and I was all like gray tinted, I guess, and my hands, or my face was in my hands, and I guess I was crying, and I couldn't move. And then all of a sudden, I guess that gray tint was like a shell, and it started to crack, and little by little, like, these pieces would fall off, and within that, there was this glow. And um, like more and more pieces fell, and then I was able to move again, and there was this like, I guess, new me, uh, and I was just like glowing, and um, yeah, that was it, and I was like, uh, what, what was that? <laughs> Um, I was like, I don't know how to take this. So I brought it up to a couple of people in church. Um, and funnily enough, like, they all said the same thing. They all said that it seems like God's trying to break a stronghold. And prior to that, Pastor Mona had spoke about strongholds. So I was like, oh, okay. And I was thinking, like, what, what could he possibly be doing, you know? I don't, I don't get it. And then... Um, the rest of the time, as I kind of like meditated on that, he brought up my anxiety. And I've struggled with horrible anxiety for the past like nine, maybe 10 years of my life. So with that, there's absolutely no peace and anxiety. Uh, and I was unable to do anything. I couldn't go out with friends. I couldn't even go to school. I uh, 
couldn't take trips, and that was a really big thing for me because I loved to travel before, and I could not take trips. Um, but yeah, within that 40 days, I began to open up, and I was able to do those things again. And I don't know, I've been, I was telling everyone, like, wow, I don't feel any anxiety at all. So um, I told my dad, I was like, um, I think I'm just going to take a leap of faith, and uh, I'm going to go Kauai with you whenever you go next time for work. Yeah. And he's like, OK, great. I'm going in a couple weeks. And I was like, oh, that's kind of <laughs> soon. That's a little soon, but OK, if that's what God wants, then OK. Uh, but yeah, and we went, and it was awesome. Uh, it was more exciting than anxious, you know? And prior to that, the last trip I took was eight years ago. So yeah, and now I just, yeah, no more anxiety. <laughs> I feel great. Another round of applause, Devin Miguel, Kylie Gamboa. Thanks, guys. Benji, you good? Benji. <laughs> well, you know, the thought that I had, and, you know, thank you for your, your courage, you know, to come up here and share a little bit of your story. Um, but, you know, sometimes we got to break down before the Holy Spirit builds us back up, right? Yeah. Oftentimes, we've got to experience different things that shatter us in order for the Holy Spirit to show up in our lives. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. Again, thank you for your courage to share. That's going to bless a lot of people. People watching online, too. and that's, <laughs> You're going to bless a lot of people with that. And, and, and really communicating the significance, the importance of, of getting connected, right? And finding those spiritual nutrients once again to be able to, to do those kinds of things, to overcome things like anxiety, you know, social disorders, different things like that. Those stuff is very, very real, very prevalent in our society today. Amen. As a matter of fact, and I think we all know this passage, Philippians 4, right? The Apostle Paul writes, be anxious for nothing, you know, but in everything by prayer and supplication. So it's bringing those things that are troubling us, admitting that they're there, and now saying, you know what? Jesus, you take it, right? But it is with a heart of gratitude. I think everything coming out of Devin's mouth was very appreciative about what is going on, how he's connected here, all the relationships that are being built. You know, I think the, uh, the, the steadfastness that they're building, the faith, the connection, all those kinds of things, all the groups that he's involved with, right? Just a heart of gratitude, just pouring out of his heart, pouring out of his mouth. Amen. So that is key, brothers and sisters. Having a heart of gratitude and being thankful and honoring the people that have gone on before you. I thank Pastor Mike for the ministry that he has that he passes on to Pastor Mark. You know, I am grateful that we got to get connected. I'm, I'm grateful for Pastor Wayne and his obedience. You know, Pastor Jack Hayford, like I shared, right? It's about the people that are going before us and being a part of that spiritual legacy that is being formed before our very eyes. And like I said, it's that golden thread that weaves us together, amen, and being grateful for that. So we are allowed to make our requests be made known to God. Some of you may say, Father God, you know, I don't want to feel this way anymore. I don't want to feel anxious about certain things. I don't want to live in fear anymore. You know, when I asked these couples, you know, CT, phenomenal last night. I don't know if you guys saw it. Chris and Melissa Henderson over here. But, you know, CT came up here for the testimony, no hesitation. I was like, Wow. You know, coming boldly, being courageous. When I spoke with Devin and Kylie, no hesitation. He's like, yeah, okay, let's do this, right? And then, and then the next person at the 10 o'clock, no hesitation, right? Because they all want to share, they all believe the importance in connecting if you want to find that peace in your life, right? And then the peace that transcends all human understanding, 
right, will guard your hearts and your minds. You know what that means? You will become strengthened. You will have the courage to be able to share. You will have the courage to testify. Amen? Because in your obedience lies someone else's breakthrough. So stop thinking about yourself. Oftentimes when we think about ourselves, we freak ourselves out. Yeah? When we start thinking about others, and we're thinking about the kingdom at large, we'll be like, nope, I can sum up this courage, and I can get up there, and I can share a little bit of my story, right? Just so that everybody can understand who Jesus Christ is, and who the Holy Spirit is, amen, and the peace that surpasses understanding. You ever got yourself in a situation, you ever got yourself in a situation where you're supposed to be freaking out, but you don't? And then the people around you, they're like, why aren't you freaking out, right? You're going to find those things. And, of course, Pastor Teresa, you know, we share the story about back in 2011 when we heard that my sister-in-law, Pastor Teresa's sister, died in a car crash out in Colorado. And it shook the entire family. So we, 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 we mourned and we wept and then we realized we need to lean on the strength of the Holy Spirit. So when we flew to Colorado to take care of her, her affairs, we were anchored in the peace of God because we knew we needed to be in order to handle the affairs of my sister-in-law. And that was a rough time. And I'm sure Pastor Teresa will share that testimony once again. Amen. In the world, you have tribulation and distress and sufferings, but be courageous, the confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished, my victory abiding. And I want to talk about the mission a little bit. Why was Jesus Christ born? Just kind of think about that a little bit. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He came to the world, so God came to the world in the form of man to, li to live among human beings, to show you that he is the prototype, heavenly designed human being that will lead us into heaven, right? But why was Jesus Christ born? He was born to die on that cross, to win the victory for us, to pay for our sins, right? That's one thing. Now Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, and what is the other thing that he needed to do? He needed to leave us with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So what does that tell us? As we seek the perfect peace that John chapter 16 is telling us, we don't have to experience peace when we get to heaven. We can actually experience peace while we're here on earth by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We don't have to wait for Jesus to take us home. We can experience it right now. Yes. What we learned so far, Jesus overcoming the world provides a foundation for faith and resilience in the face of difficulties. What does resilience mean? When trouble comes, are you going to lie down and just take it? Or are you going to stand right back up and fight back? Right? Right? True peace found in Christ allows believers to find strength and hope by trusting in his victory. Because when we see where we're headed and we get that heavenly perspective, brothers and sisters, I pray that it continues to strengthen us from the inside out. To carry on, amen, despite all the problems of the world. Hallelujah. And the final word that I want to share is we need to shift from a cross mentality to a throne room mentality. Everybody say that. Shift from a cross mentality to a throne room mentality. And this is where I want to spend time a little bit. And I pray the Holy Spirit helps me to explain this as best I can. But everybody take a moment and look at the cross right now. Just take a few seconds to meditate on the cross, the meaning of the cross, the significance of the cross. The victory that was won at the cross, the necessity of the cross, amen. And Holy Spirit told me this, you know, as we look at the cross, there are four points, right? And what I love about the Hebrew language is, is there's so much meaning 
in the Hebrew language. And Teresa and I, you know, we learned the alphabet. Some of you guys know the alphabet. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, He. Right? So Dalet, four. Dalet, brothers and sisters, means doorway. So if we look at the four points on the cross, I'm sensing that the cross is a doorway. Is a doorway into the heavenly realm where God resides and where Jesus is now seated at the right hand of the Father. But this is where I believe believers get messed up. They have a cross mentality. What does that mean? Okay. So, you know, every now and then, and everyone, everyone did, I certainly did. When I became a born-again believer, right, I came before the cross, and I kneeled before the cross, and I said, Lord Jesus, please take away my sins. Wash me clean. I know I'm a wretched person. I think bad thoughts. I did bad things. I feel guilty. I don't want to feel guilty anymore. I'm looking for the peace that you say you offer. Lord God, please take it away from me, right? And so after you do that, because you feel good afterwards, right? You stand back up again, and you go back to your old way of living. After a few months, maybe, maybe a couple of years, you mess up again. Why? Because we're all sinners, brothers and sisters. We're all sinners. And what do we do? We have the cross mentality. So we come to the cross again, and we said, Lord God, I messed up again. I feel guilty. I'm experiencing anxiety because of my guilt. Lord God, wash me clean again and again and again and again and again and again. Do you understand what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? But as we shift from a cross mentality to a throne room mentality, right? Because we come to the cross, we ought to go through the cross and into the throne room of grace. Amen? We don't come to the, we don't come to the cross to stop at the cross. We come to the cross so that it is a doorway to go through the cross so that we can go into the throne room of grace. Why do I say that? Because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father who is our destination. The last I checked, the Father is seated on his throne. And then Hebrews reminds us, therefore, let us approach the throne room of grace with boldness and courage. So none of this shy, you know, mealy, mousy, weak faith. Get, get that out of here. We are conquerors in Christ. Hallelujah. I'm proud of my son. He wrote that song. We live in victory, brothers and sisters. And I know <laughs> that's not necessarily something that's easy to do. But we look into the word. Therefore, let us approach the throne room of grace, boldness, so that we may receive what we need. And brothers and sisters, when we receive something, it usually brings anxiousness and anxiety. But understand that this word tells us that whatever we're looking for, we can find with him. Right? So we shift from a cross mentality to a throne room mentality. Does that make sense? Hang on, guys. Hang on. At this point, before we go into communion, I want to ask Pastor Teresa to come up here. And we will go into a time of communion because we're celebrating what Jesus Christ did for us and to remind us as we celebrate to go into that throne room of grace and stay there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Pastor Teresa is going to offer an opportunity for people to come to the Lord and to declare that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. Yeah, I want to make this fast um, because I think that God gave me a vision, a picture in my mind as Glenn was sharing about don't stop at the cross, uh, but go through it. 
Um, how many of you have seen that illustration where you lead people to Christ and then you have man standing on the cliffside over here and then you have Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit on the other cliffside and then there's this big cavern in between like the, great, the Grand Canyon of Gap. And then what they do is they draw the cross and they say that the cross is like a bridge, right? And so God was showing me that, that the reason why somebody created the illustration because that's the power of the cross, like Glenn said, you don't come to the cross, just get your forgiveness like you went to a priest and you repented and, you know, he absolves you of your sin and then you leave to go back to your life. No, the cross symbolizes a way for you to go over to the other side. Everybody say, go over to the other side. Because we're over here and we want to be with God. No amount of work is going to get us to God. No amount of goodness is going to get us to God because all of us fall short of the glory of God. Right? Jesus was the standard, and we all fall, fall short of that standard, right? We think that if I don't do anything, then I'm okay. Well, God says, if you think wrong things, you've already sinned. Right? Raise your hand if you've had wrong thoughts. If you don't raise your hand, that's okay. We have a prayer ministry for you. Everybody has wrong thoughts. The goodness, the goodness of God is that we have Holy Spirit at work on the inside of us, so we don't have to respond to the, um, the negative thoughts, right? So what we do is we cross over through the cross so that we can be in the presence, right? So what do we need to have perfect peace? We need the presence and the power of God. And we're talking about abiding. It is a place where we can stay. We can remain in God's presence. Once we cross over, no one says we have to cross back. We don't have to go back over here to live the way we used to live. We can cross over through the cross and remain in the presence and the power of Jesus Christ. And we're going to go into a time of communion. And communion represents that. Communion is our way as believers to celebrate that we get to stay in communion with the presence of God Almighty. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Because he allowed for his body to be broken. Because he was willing to, to, to bleed for our sinfulness. So that that price could be paid. And so we want to make sure everybody has a chance to put their faith in Christ before we take communion. So with every eye closed and every head bowed. If you've never said yes to Jesus to being your Lord and Savior. And this is the first time you're hearing the good news of the gospel that there is a way to be forgiven of your sin. There is a way to have eternal life. And there is a way to be able to abide and remain and stay in the presence of God. With every eye closed and every head bowed, if that's you and you, you want to do that for the first time, would you raise your hand? We want to pray for you. Even online, if that's you, we want to pray for you. We want to pray with you. And I suspect there may be people here this morning, you've given your heart to the Lord. You know that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior. But like what Pastor Glenn was describing, you just come and then you go. You come and then you go. You come and you go. And you're living in this cycle. And you're here and you're saying, I don't want to live in that cycle anymore. I want to cross over through the power of the cross, through the person of Jesus Christ. And I want to abide. I want to remain. I want to stay in the presence of the Almighty God. With every eye closed and every head bowed, if that's you here today. Would you raise your hand? I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. Hallelujah. I see your hands. You can put your hands down. Would you all repeat this prayer after me? Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, that he died a sinner's death for me so that I could be forgiven of my sins and I could have life eternal with you. Father, I don't want to live my own way. I want to live I want to remain abiding in your presence so that you can guide me into all truth. Thank you for loving me. And thank you for laying your life down for me. I choose now to turn away from my old life and walk in my new life with you. In Jesus' name I pray. And all those in agreement said, amen. Hallelujah.